Hi folks, I've got good news for you. Over the past half dozen years, MySQL has become a very good spatial database. And that's good news because over the same time period, affordable PostGIS hosting solutions have all but disappeared. While MySQL is available on almost all web hosting plans, sometimes for just a few dollars per month. Now I'm not going to lie to you, PostGIS is very good and it has some more functionality than MySQL. But I believe that MySQL will do what 90% of smaller web mapping projects need at a much more affordable price. In this course, you'll learn a little background about spatial databases in general, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. I'm going to attempt to answer questions like, what exactly is a spatial database? Why would you want to use one? What is SQL? And where does the spatial database actually live? Which may sound strange, but it's actually an important concept because unlike file-based storage, it's unlikely that your data is actually stored on the same computer that you're accessing it from. And I'm going to show you how to install the latest versions of MySQL and QGIS on a local computer for development purposes. And later on in the course, I'll also show you how to work with MySQL installed remotely on a web server and how to access it from various clients. I will demonstrate several ways to load both spatial and non-spatial data into the database and provide a sample data set so you can practice on your own and follow along. And this is actually something that is not well documented in MySQL and something that a lot of beginning users struggle with which is a shame because I think it turns off a lot of geospatial professionals who try to give MySQL a look. And once we have data loaded, we'll begin writing SQL queries to request information from the database, design tables, add and update data, and create our own custom functions. You'll also learn how to write SQL queries that return geometries based on spatial relationships, such as give me all of the raptor nests that are within 400 meters of a pipeline right away with the survey history. And the with the survey history is important because there's a one-to-many relationship between surveys and raptor nests, and one-to-many relationships are not handled very well with traditional GIS systems. But with MySQL, you can integrate your spatial and non-spatial data in one-to-many or even many-to-many -many relationships quite easily. I'm going to show you how to create new users and new user roles and control what privileges each role has to create new database objects and view or modify existing data. And this will give database administrators fine-tuned control over what each user is allowed to do in the database down to the field level. You'll learn to write your own custom stored procedures, functions, and triggers that execute in response to database events. And this will allow you to implement your own business logic, validate your data, and automate common processes. And this is something that I think is an advantage of MySQL, as I like its stored procedure language more than what's available with PostgreSQL. And I'll show you how to optimize your queries take steps to ensure your data's integrity, backup and restore data, and other tasks to ensure that your database runs fast and smoothly. And you'll learn much more as well. If this sounds like useful information, please go to udemy.com and search for MySQL for Geospatial. There are a lot of other MySQL courses available, but only one, as far as I know, that addresses using MySQL for Geospatial applications. This course uses the latest software as of December 2022, and that includes MySQL version 8 and QGIS version 3.28. And right now the course is 11 hours long, but I'm still adding a few lectures and it will eventually be 14 or 15 hours. And you can get it all for only $10 if you use a discount code MySQL Geo before December 2nd. And as an added bonus, all of my other courses are available during the same price and using the same coupon code during this time period as well. So thanks again for your interest. I hope you find the course informative and maybe even a little bit entertaining.